Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Call of Cinema. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to the Call of Cinema. Today, we're going to be talking about a few different things. It's kind of a Blues Day video, but I didn't want to title it as a Blues Day. I want to uh, actually really talk about Umbrella, who are putting out some amazing sets, and I think it's gone unnoticed for uh, for long enough. It hasn't really gone unnoticed, per se, but I think that people are getting their Umbrella stuff, if you're in North America, primarily through places like Vinegar Syndrome. And I really think you should be looking at Umbrella's website to get the releases because that's where you get the really good additions, really good releases. And I kid you not, when I say uh, like great additions, I'm not talking about like, okay, there's a slip on there or here's a booklet. Uh, it is insane. And you've been following uh, Cheryl Menich, Channel Heath, uh, like is doing unboxings or you've seen like Middle of Media. But then you're going to notice that uh, they do, they're doing these unboxings for these amazing ones and uh, ones that I need to get some of. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out today looking at uh, at the Umbrella website and looking at all these releases that they got out there. And some of these, are if you've never seen them, they're going to blow your mind. I, I kid you not on that. Um, because it's very important that uh, we, we look at this stuff. So... And we do go through this stuff on the stuff on the channel on a regular, on a fairly regular basis. So uh, uh, what I want to do is I want to be able to focus on this here. So, for instance, this is this is a regular box. This is not one of their big, like, this is not like the big, big sets. So let's, let's go to Pure now. Let's just show you. So this is Coffee. It is uh, one of the criminal, like, Films from uh, from Pam Greer, one of her best. Uh, it's it's known for being one of her best, and this is one of their more regular editions. But these are good. I mean, like here's the thing, though, Sean. Uh, I don't think these are being hyped. I don't think they're being hyped enough. Uh, I think if anything, uh, they're being underutilized. Because, unfortunately, there, we're seeing them from, like, one distribution company, which is not showing or maybe not able to show the best stuff that they put out. Because uh, this is the good stuff that they put out. And uh, <clears throat> this is the stuff that I would like to have. Like, But here's the thing. When you're buying a, vinegar, like, when you're buying a special edition from Umbrella, you want to make sure it's something that you really like. Because look, you can see, 75 Australian dollars is, what is that in Canadian? Let's find out. I was just doing a live, and as, as you know. And uh, I do like behind-the-scenes lives. So let's go to uh, one of my favorite places to check. My, I want to get rid of that. It's my Conan game, my plan. Um, I got to go to Conan XL sometimes. Check out. But we're, we're going to go to XE Currency. And uh, this is the killer part. So I want to look at Australian dollars to US dollars. So that's $75, right? So $75 for the collector's Blu-ray edition. Uh, hey, Benet, welcome, man. I just mentioned you. Uh, <laughs> that's your lago. Uh, Is is forty eight seventeen? Price and almost twenty dollars ship. I mean, the way you got to do it, the way that I, I figure when, when it comes to this, make sure. By the way, you've checked out the the uh, interview between Jose uh, that Ho that Benet did with uh, with Jose Prendes because it's uh, Master Chaos, as you know, on YouTube. Um, it's probably if not like no, it is no hundred percent. It it's your best video, man. It's it's amazing. So what looks like, oh, it's $75, isn't $75. It's 
$48, which is still pricier. But when you consider that it's come with the Blu-ray, the book, a rigid slip case, a slip case, poster and art cards, uh, then it doesn't look, then all of a sudden this is certainly not looking as uh, as pricey as you uh, as you would think it is. And I always say like for stuff like this, like save it for you, the releases that you really, really like. For the stuff that you're really, really into, the stuff that you really, really want. I love the title. Chat of Body Men Would Die For, and a lot of them did. Because you need to do that. You can't just come in and just go say, okay, I want to buy all their special editions. Like, you have the money to do that? Fantastic. That's wonderful. But for me, when you're looking at something like this, these are for releases that you want. These are for, for something that, that hits home with you for, uh, for one reason or another. So let's just say, so the raid, I'm sure it's going to be pricey to one too. So let's say you're in, you really like the raid, like it's one of your favorite films. You can see it's a hundred. So it's going to cost you $55, right? But what do you get for the $55? Well, you get the 4K UHD, the Blu-ray, a graphic novel, a book, a rigid slipcase, slipcase, posters and art cards. For me, that's, that's worth it. So if I like the raid, and the raid is one of my favorite films, and when I and I want to have that film on my on my on my shelf, like because I will tell you this, I am the guy that goes out and buys multiple editions of his of his favorite movies, which is kind of stupid, right? Uh, but if you, you know hindsight's twenty twenty, if you want to go in and get the best edition. Of, of a movie that you really like, uh, nine tenths out of ten umbrellas putting it out. Now, sometimes, unlike it, whether we use the raid, there's the 4K. Sometimes you're going to see a 4K edition, and they're not going to do 4K. They're just going to do a Blu-ray edition. And for some people, that that's a, that's a major downer for them. That's a major like oh, I can't believe they're doing a Blu-ray edition uh, only. But uh, for that, I, I, I kind of roll my eyes because you know I I do like I'm, I'm Jason in the way that I do like Blu-ray. I do like 4K. But I, it's not necessary for everything, and I don't think that okay, my my limited edition is 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 not as good without that because I would trade off if this didn't have a, a 4K. If this was a Blu-ray release array, for instance. The fact that the Titan graphic novel is in there, you know, along with the art cards and the custom art and the rigid slipcase and the softback book and the limited edition numbered because I, I love my limited edition numbers. I'm old school. I know limited editions don't get numbers anymore unless you're going on indicator usually. But uh, for me, that's, you know, when they say limited edition, um, if like, you know, the VSAs with the hand numbering on them or the uh, or the indicators with the numbering on the on the on the wrapper on that O-wrap, that's the way it should be. Uh, I, I get a little bit. It doesn't seem as it just seems a little bit less limited <laughs> uh, with uh, that. But the reason that I will get to lizard and women's skin, man, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I was speaking with Malcolm. I was speaking with George. And uh, I haven't spoke with uh, Jason about this yet, but I really want to, actually. Um, I want to get to it. We'll get to it. Trust me. We'll get to all these. We'll get to all these editions because I know some of these movies, this is the one I'm excited about, but that's not the one I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about is... Uh, Let's go to it. Where is it? Is it still here? Is this? Uh, I Malcolm has bought some of these releases. Uh, he hasn't bought this. The one we're going to talk about, actually. Me and Malcolm actually kicked ourselves. Uh, but this is 150 This is a pricey one. It's going to be about $100 US, right? 120 Canadian. But now this... If you're a fan of this movie like I am, um, then this is something that's like if I, was, if I was in Paris, if I was in Medaluna, and I would have walked up and I would have seen something that looked like this. Because uh, if you have not seen this in person or if you've not seen like an unboxing of this, it's really the scope isn't there. Like this looks OK. This there's a couple things. No, it's huge. It's massive. Uh, like Umbrella does do some stuff through uh the through ocn 
but not these editions, not these type of editions. These are, you know, website exclusive editions, they tend to be. Um, or if you're lucky enough to find these one in your local brick and mortar store, it's the only way you're gonna find these, Sean, unfortunately. But this is massive. This set is, if you've never seen the unboxing, I'll check it out, like look at pictures online because uh, it, it's it's you. See if I can, I'm gonna see if I can actually find. Um, I want to see somebody holding it. So maybe right there, you can kind of get a little taste. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it on how huge, how massive this one is. But, uh, it's a gorgeous set. And the thing is, I'm, I grew up with Max Hedrum, right? So Max Hedrum was a uh, character, which a lot of you guys are going to know. Some of you guys are going to be too young. Um, Jason will be too young. But uh, he was a character that he started as a, a, a just short over an hour long, like, pilot, like, movie that was done. It was very kind of like steampunkish, kind of like 50 minutes in the future uh, type of thing, right? And it has this guy that is a journalist. And he hits his head, and his his consciousness goes into a computer, and it's uh it becomes this it's it's becomes self aware and becomes this this character called Max Hedrum. Now he lives, but uh there's this like kind of map of his consciousness called Max Hedrum on a computer, and it's this really genius thing. It like was really satirical. It did a lot of wonderful stuff. So they became pretty popular. It became a season a series in uh on ABC for for a year unfortunately it didn't last uh but it was a it was a really good show yeah. kind of ahead of its time but max Hedman became this massive like uh, marketing guy uh so you had this computerized guy so it was matt Fruer actually makeup because there was no computerized thing at that point and um uh, what uh you'd see him on coke and he had like a talk show so the guys that did that parlayed that popularity to making the super mirror brothers movie which was a uh, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a nightmare for a lot of people, uh, themselves included. But when you look at something like this, like uh, one, that you know, this was a cheesy movie at the time, so you really gotta love the set and you really gotta love the what's behind the scenes. And there's so much craziness behind the scenes because we got like, we got 4K U UHD, two Blu rays, books, not a poster, posters, art cards, slip case, rigid case. And uh, we, they got books, like literal books here. We got the script. Uh, a 480-page softback book, including a host of production materials, interviews, and artwork. And if you know what a what a massive like crap show that this movie was to make, uh, that sounds frigging fascinating. Over 200-page bound book of scripts, because the scripts drafts changed dramatically and drastically throughout the the filming to the point where Leguizamo and um, Oh my God, uh, Hoskins would uh, would get drunk on set because he were just really fr frustrated with everything. A replica of the souvenir magazine from 1993, the 34 page magazine. Uh, classic artwork design over at a rich, rich case, classic artwork design slipcover, eight replica cards, two eight by three posters featuring USA, Australian, Thai, and Japanese posters. So that means a reversible double sided posters. Um, and just like feature wise, we got like three new audio, no, sorry, four new audio commentaries. We got a brand new 4K master of the film, uh, new to release scenes, and like um, it, it's it's insane. Uh, we got a new work print in HD for the film, music videos, a whole ton of stuff on here. And you know, a lot of people are going to look at this and they're going to say, well, what if they put out like a Super Mario Brothers VSU? I feel like I'm, I'm, and I'm not dunking on, on Vinegar Shadow. I love Vinegar Shadow. I think they're a great company. Um, I think they do amazing stuff. <clears throat> However, uh, it doesn't matter what any other edition looks like, whether it's VSU or Severin does it out, for instance, or Keen who puts it out. Keen puts it out. Here's the thing. You're not going to beat this edition. Unless the ghost of Bob Hoskins is going to come to your house and knock on your door and, and hand you this this edition right here, uh, 
and sit down and talk to you, but like be behind the scenes. I mean, you're really not going to beat this edition when it comes to when it comes to the the work and just the amount that's put into this. Now, you might not like sleep or sleep marrow. This may not be your thing. You might think, oh, it's not worth it for me. And if it's not worth it for you, then you shouldn't buy it. You should wait until and see a movie that is worth it for you. But the thing about Umbrella and the thing that they're doing right now is they are putting out this, what I would consider ultra prestige. Because I've shown you guys prestige. If you've watched my Patreon channel, you've seen what a prestige edition is. Uh, then, and you'll see prestige edition. You saw prestige edition just if you watch my video, my live video on here, not too long for targets, right? George watched it. And uh, that's, you know, but I th consider this an ultra prestige. This is beyond what a regular prestige edition is. And Umbrella are doing these. At a time in the in a physical media landscape, when things have become a bit more niche, where things have become a bit more collector-centric or curator-centric, uh, or archival centric. I, I would say that if you're doing this, hopefully you're on the curator uh, side of things in that you're buying stuff that you want, that you like. Uh, don't buy something just because it's a part of a company, a part of a name. Buy something that you love. But if you love everything, like say, for instance, uh, Benet is a massive fan of Inger Syndrome and he feels safe. You can, he'll, he'll buy stuff. That that they put out no matter what, and he feels safe with that because he knows the kind of the kind of get him right. If you've got a company to get you like that, wonderful. That's fantastic. Um, but uh, and you know he'll bypass other ones for that, which is uh, which 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 is is curating. Uh, but for me, I uh, I gotta go for things that just hits my you know hit my youth, hit my childhood, hit my hit me. I'm super mad, but I haven't seen it in ages. It's such a cool film, George. I would love to have this edition. Uh, I can't believe that it, it came like when it was stock is back and it's back available again now. Um, but the thing is, this may not be your your jam. But the Umbrella is putting out these editions for not just Super Mario, but for a bunch of other films. Uh, and they're doing it so that okay, I've got this edition of the film, especially when they do their 4Ks, because some people are going to be stuck on the 4K thing. Um, you know, it's okay if you. Are. Mm -hmm. But uh, really, is it is it you know it, they're putting out the best edition of films, hands down. They're putting out the best edition of movies, and I'm going to give you some pretty much. Uh, we're going to go through some of theirs so you can see that it's not just one. It's not just one type of film that they're doing. Um, so this is you know joint security area. So JSA. Malcolm is watching right now. He's probably pretty excited. Um, but as you can see right here, because it's Park Chan Walk, um, there's, you know, we got two brand new audio commentaries on here. We got the slip case, the rigid case, the book, the Blu ray, the art cards, the poster, the works. Uh, and if you're a massive fan of this film, it's the edition you want. Julie Christie is darling. Here's a bit. Here's a niche of a niche, right? So I'm a massive Julie Christie fan, but and you know I like these older old school films. Uh, so if you're a if you're a fan of this stuff, like this, you're gonna want this edition. You're gonna want to put this edition into your uh, into your collection because you're looking at a 48 page book. You're looking at like the rigid slipcase, the inside slipcase, the, the art cards, the reverse poster, the limited edition numbered release, which Again, I'm I'm a sucker for a number. It's not a, you know. And you're gonna see as we go there that it's not just one genre; it's all massive different genres. So, do I feel like you should have at least one of these in your collection? I'm, I'm sure that I can go through this. I will find something that you'll be under that you're very, a very young guy, Pierce, by the way, guys, uh, for dating the enemy. Who would have thought dating the enemy would get a release like this? It's a gorgeous release, too. It's, it's an absolutely stunning release. As is Love and Any Other Catastrophes. Which is a it's about as 90s as you get. Like if you like 90s films, this is a 90s film. It's 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 so 90s, it reeks of 90s. Uh and if you remember the if you grew up this time, remember the 90s, the music and the and just that 
that sense of super nonniness, which is wonderful. But like somebody mentioned earlier on my uh, other sh on my stream, I was doing like a behind the scenes. They're putting up primevals. So we just went through a bunch of dramas and stuff like that. It's true. JSA was put up by Arrow Video, though. If you're a massive fan of that film, if you're an if that is your favorite movie, George, for instance, it's not your favorite movie. I know that. But if it was your favorite movie, which edition would you have? You pay the extra to get that in the incredible edition because that's what you'd want. Because that's that is where things are leaning when it comes to uh, when it comes to curating stuff. Is that we you, people may not buy it may not be as many people buying or may not be blanket buying as much as they used to but people are now at the point where like okay my space and my shelves are valuable so when i put out when i'm getting a prestige a special edition uh of a of a film it's going to be films that i really like so if you're a massive fan of private views look at this look at this gorgeous artwork by the way Let's just let's just soak this in for a second. That is super cool. I love the way that's done. And again, Blu-ray, book, rigid slip, rigid case, slip case, poster, art cards, uh, brand new video essay by Howardus Berger is on here as well. Like people said, full moon would have, could have put this out, and he definitely could have, but they would not have put it in an edition like this. Um. There's one, well, we're going to look at the uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, because apparently it's a really great film. But uh, I'm a massive Jallo fan. So let's go to uh, my my wheelhouse. And that is F Lucha Fulci and Jallos. Something I talk about on my channel quite a bit. I haven't talked about them enough recently. But uh, one that I'm, I'm a massive fan of. And everybody knows that when it comes to Jallo, this is, this is kind of, this is my, uh, it's my specialty. So here we have a limited collector's edition of Lizard and a Woman's Skin. This one really tempts me. Why? Because like the Super Mario one, I have a physical, I have a connection to it. And that I, I love Lizard and Woman's Skin. I love Lucha Fulci. I love Yellows. And I love collector's editions. And this seems to like hit on everything here. So we got the Blu-ray. We got a book. Let's see what the book, how big is the book. We got a 48 page book with essays by Alexander, Hillary, and Nicholas. Now that's, see, I'll look for certain names. Like uh, I'll look for Kate Ellinger, Helen, like Heather Drain, Alexander Helen Nicholas, uh, Kayla Janice. And um, we look, we got a new video essay by the Flying Machis brothers. Hope I got that name right. Uh, we got a new audio commentary with Howard Asperger and Troy Hellworth, electric commentaries. Uh, a visual essay by Howard Asperger and Francesco Mas Masazzi. Um, I'm not going to, Francesco, we're going to go with that. A new uh, on Kim Baker, on Stanley, Kim Newman and Stanley Baker. Uh, you know, the whole bunch of stuff that was in there. The only thing that stops me is because I have, like, I have a really good edition of this from Mondo. But this is above that. Uh, this is way, way above the, what I've seen from the Mondo edition. And that's what that's what just blows my mind, is we're seeing these here releases. And what I want to show you is Bully, because I think that is a that is a good representation of, of some of the curves. So we'll look at, like, stuff like Tanker and stuff as well. But uh, Bully kind of stood out. Because it's massive. I'm going to see if I can find it. Well, what I'm trying to find, let's look at Tank Girl for a second. A lot of people love this film. So again, we're looking at another, you know, this $75, which is around $48 American. I don't know what that is in British. So for my uh, UK for people out there, like George. Uh, let's do it. Let's find out. So let's turn that over to British Pounds. So that's 38 bit British pounds. Now, here's the caveat. Like somebody mentioned before, I think it was Sean. Like their shipping can be pricey. Um, you really have to work out, okay, what I do when I buy anything from a place where I know the shipping is going to cost me a lot is that is a cost ratio scenario that I do. I do that up for everything, for any every move that I buy. In that, uh, okay. Can I offset the cost with, I'll set myself a perimeter of money that I am willing to spend. And then I will look through 
and I will find releases on the website that go within that perimeter. And I want to make sure that I, that the, well, that I'm not paying a third or whatever for the shipping uh, that I'm paying for the for the film itself. So I'll go through different options. Like, okay, if I buy this special edition, but I also buy this and this, can I utilize shipping on aspects there? And there's certain ways like that you are able to do that. You'll be able to go in and you can go and you'll put things in and out of your cart until you get to a shipping option that that's comfortable for you. Like say whether it hits you to a freer shipping option, to a lower shipping option. Um, it's important to go through and uh, and to do that stuff. So I, I do I always do a cost ratio analysis when I'm looking at this type of stuff. I know it sounds really geeky, uh, but it's um, it's important because your your money and your time is really is uh, is is you know it's paramount. So you want to be able to uh, to look in and do that. But let's I just want to look at bully. And then we'll look at the, the Dune edition, look at some of these other stuff. But I just like the a massive set they put up for Bully. So again, this is another big one. So Bully, again, it's a Larry Clark film. So it's gonna be it's a bit of a brutal film. It's uh it's not gonna be hit everybody in the same place, but it's uh it's a it's a damn good movie. <clears throat> one that really stuck with me after I saw it. So Full 1998 original 300 page nonfiction hardback book the movie was based on. Bully, does anyone deserve to die? Um, we got a custom design at a ridge slipcase, custom design slipcase, eight rep Calabi cards, an A3 reversible poster, limited edition numbered, new notes on Bully, auto commentary, new video essay. So when you, I'm a reader, and for those that watch my channel and all the, you know, the other geeky stuff that I got, whether it's like steam thrower books or omnibuses or stuff like that, um, I just reading randomly every, pretty much everything. Uh, I read my booklets. I read my books, and uh, a three hundred page, like the full three hundred page hardback book that this one is based on. You don't get more tempting for me than something like that. For release like that, to see this for bully, to see this for and and like just for a second, let it sink in. Uh, we've looked at just recently Super Mario Brothers with a massive over four hundred page book, which you know is a cult film. It's a definitely niche film. And now we're looking at Bully, which is a, a, a complete on the, on the other spectrum. Other side of that spectrum. And again, it's a 300 page book, hard band book, coming with there with posters and art cards and all that, uh, and slip cases and rigid slip cases and all that type of stuff. I thought you'd still be sleeping, man. <laughs> to buy that in the quiet fan with over $200 shipping free. It's easy to do, especially if you're in the UK, George. That's the thing. Okay, but here's the thing. Let, let's let's do that. Let's Bully's got a second side edition, right? Or does it? Okay, let's go second side films. Let's say we hit on Bully. I love my secondary releases. Uh, uh, bull has us as, a, as one, but I don't see a bully. A bull, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, even at what Second Sight puts out, it really doesn't kind of touch this. Let's just see here. Need to I'm checking on something real quickly, which may uh hopefully 
uh, add a little spice to the video. <clears throat> It's the range of these of these titles that kind of blow my mind. As a really <clears throat> oh dude don't, don't apologize man <laughs> you know, how many times get a name wrong is kind of my my thing Larry Clark kids is about sex bullies about violence I think kids is a bit more than sex but <clears throat> I, uh, I get what they're saying. And we're waiting. Let's dive into what my better half's fun, favorite, one of her favorite movies of all time. And <clears throat> she's loving the new ones as well. But I don't know if I could do this because uh, it's 180, which is going to be 150 American, 160 Canadian. But if you're that massive of Dune fan, and this is these this is the TV Dune, by the way, um, so it's the 2000s Dune Children of Dune era stuff, which is way more faithful to the books uh, than, like, say, the Lynch, because well, the Lynch didn't have the ch choice. But um, look at that! It reminds you of the cup, right? <clears throat> it's 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 just an incredibly massive edition. And, you know, out of stock, of course. At 180 Australian, this is out of stock. So these aren't things that people, like, aren't looking at. These aren't things that people are like, oh, man, I guess I should I should wait or something. It's not my thing. Or people are, like, are, are not going jumping on. People are jumping on this stuff. And the, it's the wide range, 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 what's wide range of stuff that kind of blows me, uh, like kind of blows my mind. Now, there's a, I think there's a special edition of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey up here somewhere. Yes, yeah, so let's check the special edition. <clears throat> so the fact that they have like a very Winnie the Pooh looking case for this is absolutely gorgeous. And it's intriguing. Okay. What do you think? <clears throat> Hello. 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 Welcome, May to December. Welcome to the uh, to the stage here. Uh, we're talking about, and I guess you're seeing. I I didn't expect to be up so early. <clears throat> I may. I'm up. At, I'm mostly up at eight nine o'clock nowadays. Oh, I had to get up early because the little ones here, the Grizu. So. Uh, I think he's resting over there. He's tiny. Oh, nice. than Ariel. I got to go check. Let me see something. It's a tiny little thing. He's not resting. He's fighting with a uh, cushion. Oh. He fits in my hand. <clears throat> That's nice. He's that small, way. Right? Yeah. Little Pixie Ariel attacked me this morning. Look at that. Oh, she's getting violent with you because you're not giving she's... her enough attention. Oh, I think that's the thing too. Like her and, but she, she's best friends with with the new one, so <clears throat> that's the uh, that's, that's the nice. thing. All right, so we got Wind the Pooh, Blood and Honey too, which is apparently amazing and on mm. its way to becoming a, a franchise and a good franchise because yes. when when it, the Pooh, Blood and Honey, the first one was man, right? It was kind of. Uh yeah, I didn't think it was brilliant. I thought it had promise. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was very lackluster in its execution, especially of the main uh, characters of Winnie and that. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I was very iffy on it. And I haven't seen the second one yet, but through all intents and purposes, everything that I've heard about this, it's apparently awesome. I uh, pre-ordered like, it. You saw it? You already pre-ordered it? Yeah, I, I pre-ordered that, JSA, Quiet Family, 
Um, what else did I pick up? I picked up coffee. I picked up driving. I picked up um, Liz in a Woman's Skin. Um, and then after that, when I saw you live, I picked up the Super Mario set. <laughs> Are you serious? And that Dr. Crippen. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I was going to buy the Super Mario set originally, but then it sold out. But I don't know what difference is between the Trust of the Fungus and the One Up edition. Uh, well, we'll check afterwards. We'll see if we can find out for you. Okay. I um, love the posters in this. Yeah, the posters are gorgeous. The art cards are amazing. I love the book. I love that there's a kid's mm. friggin' book with this. Did you uh, see the first one? The first one had the, uh, from Umbrella. First one from Umbrella had the same kind of style packaging. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, we'll check after. So, so they, they're like books on the shelf. <laughs> I love that. Like a ruined childhood 16-page kid's book. The sticky story of a bloody pool. How can you not love that? How can you not love that? That's true. I did question whether or not to buy it because I went, there might be a 4K coming out because the first one has one. But I went, if they come from a 4K master, it doesn't matter, does it really? There's the, Yeah, that's the thing. Like, one, it's gonna, it's usually coming from a 4K master. And two, it's Winnie the Pooh blood, blood and honey. Let's be serious. Do we really need, like, there's, there's certain times when you're like, okay, like, I really need a 4K of this. If you're said, okay, I'm waiting because the new Dune movie is coming out. And I want to get a 4K edition of the new Dune movie. Yeah. I get it. Or if like it's some massive sprawling epic, if it's Lawrence of Arabia. Like, oh, okay, yeah. I want the Blu-ray Lawrence of Arabia, but I'm, I'm waiting on that 4K edition. But Winnie yeah. the Pooh, Blood and Honey, I think you're safe. That's like yeah, I think you're buying any of the slasher stuff that you, I got from like, like Hell Holly could come out tomorrow with a 4K edition. I don't need that. <clears throat> I would not. And unless they're going to put some massive like upgrade, unless the cast of hell high is going to come to my house with the they game. might well you might what they might do is if they release it um but they might release it with a blow-up doll of the woman <laughs> and they might Maybe release it, it with uh, yeah. with one of three masks from the film that would then be a must buy right <laughs> see if and i've been trying to find a way to get this into the video they did this if say these release orphan killer yeah <clears throat> and they said okay so we're going to Release Orphan Killer. And by the way, with it, you're going to get this mask. Oh. That's a, <clears throat> that's a bit of a you need, different. You need to do a whole stream and just that mask and see how yeah, long you can keep it on for. Yeah, so uh, that's a, that, uh, that will be a donation stream because they have <laughs> some of this mask. But the, the difference oh, between where for now, where? yeah, go on. And the uh, ones that are the, the ones that were put out later by uh, mm. I think they were mass produced. Is this one was made by the director uh, when the film was was being like promoted? He made so it himself, actually, and yeah, he, so he handmade wow. those himself, and he sold them uh, at the time for an amazing deal, actually, for like fifty dollars. Oh, um, that's not bad. I think it was like seventy five dollars was supposed to be, but I was there and I was at like. Uh, I was talking to Diane, who was the star of the film, <clears throat> and <clears throat> about like I thought I'd followed the journey that the film had. I was at the Horicon, and uh, she went over to uh, to Matt, he was the Farnsworth, the director, and she said, "This guy's a really big fan of the film. He knows a lot <clears throat> about it." Mm. Um, and she got me a deal, <clears throat> oh, so nice. you know I totally appreciate that. And things he said, you know, come back. I'll sign the inside the mask because you know things are starting to get a bit busy right now. About like the because obviously this wasn't something they had like a ton of, it wasn't like yeah, they had like one or two of these, I think, <clears throat> because they were homemade. Um, and he said, I'll sign it tomorrow when we do just before we do the uh, the thing because I was gonna watch it on the big screen. <clears throat> so I ended up getting really, really sick and losing my oh, voice dear. and having to stay at, <clears throat> stay at my sister in law's, which was a stand at the time. <clears throat> but um, and because of that, unfortunately, I uh, I didn't get to go. I didn't get signed afterwards. But I, I the thing oh. is, I'm kind of glad I didn't. Because here's the thing: I don't know if I'd be so <clears throat> cavalier. I'm gonna get a drink. I've been wearing okay. this. If I um, if yeah, because you probably rub it off. You'd rub off the signature, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, George, that's the question here. 
haven't seen the first one yet. I've been putting it off because a lot of people say it's a heap of crap. It's not great. It's but here's the thing, George. Terrifier wasn't great. Um, the you know the up the Terrifier two, pretty awesome. <clears throat> but if you you got to see Terrifier to get to the coolness that is Terrifier two, mm. and it's like this. So do you should you see? You don't need to buy a collector's edition. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey number one. Hell, hell no. Uh, but do, should you see it? Yes, because apparently this they're building up this really cool world. And this really cool kind of like horror cinematic universe. And we, this is what we want. We need these new icons. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Winnie the Pooh or Terrifier or um, whoever yeah, comes up next. the same old people over and over again. Because it adds, it adds a little bit more to it, doesn't it? Instead of it just being, oh, Jason or uh, Freddy or that. You know, they're great. But it's glad to get some newbies in there and get them kind of in that kind of world of, oh, it's mixing it up more. It's true. I mean, like, and George, if you like Terrifier, you're going to love Blood Hunting. Uh, because mm -hmm. the original Terrifier is pretty much so on par with Blood and Hunting, with probably better acting in Blood and Honey, yeah. to be totally honest with you. Um, <clears throat> but. Um, you better get a drink. I know. I got to get a drink. Um, but here we go. So there's two editions. Which edition did you buy for? Uh, did you buy the one up edition? Uh, I bought one up edition because the Trust the Fungus one wasn't there. Trust the Fungus was sold out, right? Yeah. I can't imagine what's missing. Because look at what's it looks look at the same. It's a 400 odd, odd page book. I got to get a Coke. Mm -hmm. I should, should probably get a healthy drink. Let's drink. Oh, yeah. For brilliant movies, I love them. Can't wait for the third one to come out. It's funny, you know, George. I um, I like the original Terrifier more than number two. I think because number two, in my view, was way too long. I mean, it was good, but it felt so long. Um, as the first one, I like the soaring bit in the first one. Um, what? The sawing bit, you know, where they saw through the, you know what, you know, when she's upside down. Yeah, but like that, the but... thing you got to deal with is the acting from part one. The acting part one isn't great. Aside from part two, the acting's pretty bad. True, uh, but when does that ever matter in horror movies? Not that. You know, when you think about it, most horror movies that people love have got terrible acting in them. I mean, I love Fatal Games. Doesn't mean it's got great acting. Mm. You know, what did you do with that? Give me a sec. My cat ran off something, <clears throat> uh, but uh, I cannot imagine what what is not in this edition that you want that you want. This has like different scripts, um, different like uh, it has a four hundred page book behind the scenes. Sorry, where you go? I felt I really felt like I had to grab this um, because I was like, <laughs> if I don't, I regret like I did the last time. The scene I took love is the bedroom. That was insane. It was insane. George. I um I uh you know, I've only watched her for one, two once. I do want to pick up the four K still book of them both together, but then because there's a third one coming out, I'm like I might wait on that. I um as for uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey universe. There's a place, it's probably going to be the new Marvel universe with like an infinite thing going on where they're killing and doing this, and then they have to unlock this portal to this realm where basically you see all these animated characters dancing around, a bit like uh, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, what's that? Kitty. Oh, nice. I was wondering what that was because it looked like ice cream. And look how because how close up it was. Look at a quick pixie's drawing. Oh wow. She's getting big. Oh, she's adorable though. <laughs> but I mean, this is like this. If you like, that's the thing. Like, it's what I said here. I'm not sure if you're here earlier and you just didn't speak. Uh, but the thing is that these editions, like 
every one of these editions is not for everybody. Like, I don't think people should no. or need to have a collector's edition of everything. Oh, no, but, especially not like this. This is excessive. Yeah, so, but the titles, titles that, like, ring true to you, that are something that you want, uh, for me, this is... This is ultra prestige. This is when you get well, to this is the edition that okay. This is a BL end all when it comes yeah. to uh, stuff like this. Especially like, if it's in okay. someone's hands, it's like massive. It's like mm. I think it's like I want you to get those. If you want to, we can come on in and we can talk about more. Mm. Definitely. Uh, here's the thing though. I'll be moved by then. Yeah, yeah, we'll see a new place. I'm actually excited about that. Mm. How's it going, by the way? Uh, it's going good. Uh, spoke to movers today. Uh, waiting for them to give us a quote. Um, they're going to supply boxes and stuff, so that's good. I've probably taken a talk out maybe 2,000 movers out of cases and put them in a box. Um, you know, plastic box in those yeah. sleeves, you know, those tear fold sleeves. Because uh, I, I said to Donna, I said, you know what? I need to do that with my DVDs and I need it with my generic Blu-ray so I've got room on my shelves. Uh, That's true. And, we, and if you're going to buy these editions, you're going to need that space. Yeah, and when we move, I can then just stack those boxes up and just go through them, you know. So, because really, my shelves should only really have my Eurekas and uh, all those other kind of titles on it, really. But it's stressful because obviously you want them all out, don't you? But... No, it's true. But look at me. So I I'm, I went moved from like a uh, I had a basement with two massive rooms in it, uh, at a at a house I was renting, to a condo that I own. But I have a lot less space. So yeah. I really had to get to that spot where I'm like, okay, what do I keep here? Uh, yeah. Which you know where people see. What do I bring out to the farm, where I know I'm still gonna have to double things over. <clears throat> yeah. Now that has changed a little bit, as you know, because my uh, my mother-in-law she started like putting shelving yeah a bunch of shelving in and um uh, so that i could get everything out and yeah. she worked with maids to uh go and like get stuff out on the shelf she said okay you can just come here and arrange it when you want to uh which was really sweet of her i was in paris when she did that and oh, uh, nice. <clears throat> but i think when it comes to this what it, this has to be okay I, this is the bl and all i want this is a film i love i want to have the best edition of this film yeah umbrella does the best edition uh like people have said to me like and i've heard like what about if like say it becomes a vsu what if super mario becomes a vsu well that'd be really yeah, nice that is, it's not gonna make it any better than that is it yeah like it's still like is the vsu gonna have a, a, the 400 odd page book i don't think uh because then it's it's going to go beyond the vsu for thing you know if, if you ask Severin, me Severin puts it as a bundle right um, yeah if you ask me vsu is really lazy I don't think they're lazy. You know, I think they're good. I think they they're, are. They're, good. they're really lazy. I mean, they're good. Don't get me wrong. But if you're going to, if someone's going to say, oh, I'm going to wait for the VSU of Super Mario, then you're not going to get anything close to it. You know what I mean? You're going to get what? A book, uh, a slipcover over a slipcase thing, and then a big slipcover. It's great. Don't get me wrong. It looks nice. But like you said before, you can't really compare them because of the quality. It is. That's the thing. And here's one right here. Now, some people would wait on a 4K for this. I won't. Uh, this is the, uh, all the ones that are there. This is one of the ones, and it doesn't have as much as some of the other ones do. But I love this movie. So this is, this is the that. If you've never seen them, it's kind of like some people kind of compare it to The Strangers because of the home invasion angle of it. Some people have even gone as far as saying, oh, it's, you know, it's pretty much The Strangers. Kind of ripped this off. It's very different from mm. the strangers. It's not at all like that, uh, except for a home invasion. That's the only part. Um, but them, it's its own thing. Now I saw this. Yeah. This is a, a French film. You've seen this. Um, yeah, it is an amazing movie. And if this would have been in Paris, I would have bought this a hundred percent. Was there any umbrella Philippine, stuff in Paris? I didn't see. Uh, there was some umbrella stuff, but um, there was a bunch of stuff behind. Here's the thing. I was in Metaluna for the first time, and there was a ton of like box sets uh, that were behind uh, Ben Bruno uh, on the, behind, like at the counter, and I didn't even notice them. 
like oh. except uh, ones that were like right on the counter. I didn't notice the boxes that were there to the point where Hind got the um, Emmanuel, Central World of Emmanuel box it for me. I didn't even see it there, but she saw oh, it. Girl. She looks everywhere. Whereas but I'm you, getting like so, oh, so, so you so you had the tunnel vision so much you were blind to what could have been. Exactly, there was so much there. Like there may have been a like a, a one of the radiance ones I was looking for, and I just didn't know. Like the mm. box sets, I was looking for the uh, Casanastro or the the Italian like comedies yeah. uh, box sets, and I, I was like, I don't see them here, but I'm I'm like I'm a typical guy in that if it's not right in front of my face, I often don't see it, don't see it. Add into the point that I'm going to like this store that I'm super hyped to go to for the very first time. Yeah, that's true, and you only had and, limited uh, time as well. Yeah, so now luckily him was there. Now see if we were there, me and you. We don't, we totally look around at everything sure. because that's kind of the the thing. When you're with another well, part, when I uh, when I go up Donna and we look in a movie store or something, I go around the place scanning every shelf three times before we leave. See, Hin was tired, and I didn't want to do that there because I we'd already been to jo Gilbert Joseph, and we're there for a massive length of time, and we had to walk, mm. and she you know she's feeling some pain that from like yeah. a massive like walk, like I was feeling some pain. Uh, but uh, it was, I was like, you know, I'll, I'm going to look as best I can, but I was feeling guilt. You get that guilt feeling, okay? I want her to be able to rest. Yeah. I want her to be able to sit down. This is before we knew, like, a lot of cafes and stuff that, that she could go to. Yeah. But uh, so the first time so, we were there, like. So when Donna gets, the windows going, oh, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm struggling. I go, just sit on the floor and shut up. <laughs> and uh, well, the no, good I thing don't is do that. Go obviously, obviously I agree. Crossbar. You've got. Yeah, I agree. There's like seating outside. So I say, why don't you sit outside? But I don't like leaving on her own anyway because I think she's, you know, so yeah. Um, George There's mentioned the film there, vault. Man. Actually, let's mention that for a quick, quick. So, film vault are putting it steel books. And again, before we go any further, we have to say this. Who talked last, last year before Christmas that steel books were about to make their comeback? This guy right here. This This guy right here. Mm. Um, here's the thing though. Uh, unless those steelbooks are massively big steelbooks, I can't see how they can be the same of the of the film vault release. They're not. Before. They're just they're just a still book edition put in a slipcover. With the 4K. Yeah, but, 4K. Well, which is great. Yeah, if you want that, but personally, my view is this: if you didn't get the film vault original version, if you're a collector, do not buy the still book versions because there's this whole debate right now. Because I was watching a guy on a podcast uh, last night, and he was talking about. It, and he says it's just a way to make people rebuy them again. It is. I mean, you know, so and don't without do it. Being just special, like the, the prestige of it, the film vault thing is that, and George, you know, this he's got all, almost all of them. I think is it has this like Except glass. Yours thing on the inside, right? The little piece, this glass yeah. thing. A well from the film. That's not going to be in the, obviously that's not going to fit in silver. I I personally think those film vaults, they're really nice. Those collections, like the ones Jules got, they're really nice. They're really premium. They look good on the shelf. But I think they're way too I think they're way too much. But then you know saying that if I want to say it from a different degree, I've been buying the Marvel still books that have you know the series is in. And yeah. they're 49 99 44 and all they've got is the movie, the series, the still book, and art cards. So, you know, I think it's all dependent on who you are more than anything. But the thing um, is, like, it's a steel book. Like, it's it's not, it doesn't have the premium stuff that the other ones have. No. So it's it's just, like, trading more for it. So basically, I, I, if, if you already own the movie, don't buy it. Yeah. Uh, don't buy it again. Um like film vaults were meant to be like releases for you know quote unquote important films, uh, and in in a kind of a prestige edition. It's funny because I'm really weird because I look at things like Goodfellas, I look at things like Scarface, and that, and I go, I'm fine with them in normal editions, right? But then I'll have something like Super Mario, for you know I like. But won't be as important to anyone else. And I'm like, yeah, that's got to be that hundred dollar <laughs> edition. You know, that's really weird. That's what I love about that. It's like collectors. It's such a wide range of of that. There's gonna be people that are very much like 
oh, these are important. And these are the, the very same people, and that's not a shade, uh, that'll look at like, oh, I get the criterions. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I get, when we will look, we will talk about it afterwards because Criterion some announcements. And actually, one of them I'm kind of excited about. I'm excited by them actually. So we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about that too as well. Actually, let's do that right now before we go on here. Um, the, I will say though, uh, one thing I don't like about Criterion in the UK is their sales suck. Yeah, they do actually. That's in not the UK near, because. Because I was on uh, Amazon, and I was like, "Oh, I might get Pinocchio 4K, twenty nine 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 normally, twenty four pounds." And you're like, "At least make it twenty quid." <laughs> all right, so let's look at all the releases. This is going to be a massive one. It's a big set, actually. Um, it is. I've seen it. it. Looks lovely. It's got book and everything in there, like pop book. It does. Uh, and and Billy the Kid. Again, this is this is what you want to see. Two. 4K UHDs of the Ooh. disc of the film, Dolby Vision HDR, and two Blu-rays. It's four. Dylan and Durango, new interview, new 2K Digital Master, or the soundtrack, because uh, we're going to have the uh, documentary, Passion Poetry, Peck and Pause, Last Western. Um, doesn't mention the book here, but I know there's a book with this. There is a book. There's always a book with a minute. It's right there. Right but this is a this is a proper book, like not like a booklet. But it's. I will buy that. I will buy that eventually. The good thing is, at least I know I won't go print very quickly. Yeah, it's not like Peck Buy's best western or best film, but I do like it. Where's Sunset Cuddy to talk about the good old westerns? Hi, right, Cuddy. I didn't. I get my stuff's not, not like coming up, coming up as fast. I guess. Oh, no, no, it's not here. I was just saying. Oh, oh okay. where is it? Because the Western, you know? I see you. I'm excited for this. 4K of this. About time. Obviously, a favorite of hints. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, we're talking John Pierre Melville, which is her wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, and it's Elaine Delon, yep. who we it's both adore. Yep. Uh, it's such a wonderful film too, and it's it's a beautiful 4K edition. It looks lovely. I love that they changed the cover as well. I I, I do too because I, I felt they got lazy with that. Because the problem is when you uh, when they release the same edition with the like two editions of the same cover, you can easily pick up the wrong one if you're not looking. And it's happened not to me, but I know this happened for people. Oh, Vin Vin. Now, is, it, uh, now is this in? Now is this in the box set from uh, Curzon? I don't know. Because uh, Kirsten released it, and that big set didn't have like 18 of his movies in. There's a, a probably television's got an announcement coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, uh, when is it? It's uh, the weekend? I think so. We're going to do a video on that. Mm. It's be a big one. I'm looking, forward, I'm looking forward to seeing And they've got the sale, haven't they? It, they do have the sale. Um, I mean, it's going to be an exciting one. Um, I, I got to reach out to something. Perfect days. I don't remember this one as well. Do you remember Perfect Days? Uh, no, I've got the box set, uh, but I didn't know if that was in it because I watched. I watched that film. I watched most of his films, to be honest. That's why I bought the set. I just don't have time to go through them because I'm watching everything else. Am I? No umbrellas just... from Australia, but they're over. I don't think they are actually. Like I think some of them, uh, I I will agree to an extent, but. I think... So, like things like the Super Mario set and stuff like Bully are, are not overpriced at all, actually. I, I think I, you know, I'll be honest with you, it depends where you are in the world. If you're in the UK, right, it cost me 200 and I think 67 pounds to buy eight box sets, which is a bargain considering how many things I get from Vinegar Syndrome for that price. Yeah. Um, you know, now things like the Super Mario set, yes, it's overpriced if you don't care what's in it. You but know, then you buy the if you buy standard edition, that's the difference. exactly. Now, this is what people don't realize, right? So I'll say this quickly before we continue. When I looked up JSA and I saw it, I had to have a collector's edition because that's probably my third uh, in my top three favorite Korean movies of all time. 
So much so, if I literally sent it to uh, to Alex and went and uh, literally screamed in the thing because I was that excited. I've owned seven copies of that movie. Anyway, that doesn't matter. What matters is when I saw that, that was let's say eighty dollars. If you bought it normally with just a slip, it was like sixty five dollars. You know, to me, yeah, that would have been overpriced because I missed out on that collector's edition, but was the right price. So, do I think that they're expensive? Yes, depending on what you're interested in. No, if you're like me, who I want these movies, I want them with the best version because I love them. Like, same with Quiet Family, I was excited about that because I haven't seen that since the days of Blockbuster. And that was a bad DVD. <laughs> um, so, it was a bad double disc DVD from Tai Sang, funny enough. Um, so, yeah, I think it's all depends where you are, the cost, your view. Now, don't get me wrong, would I rather they were cheap? Of course I would. Everybody would, wouldn't I? I wish that the collectors are set up. Super Mario was 150. I wish it was uh, 100. And then it would be like £45 or something. But with the free shipping, when you go over, it makes it cheaper anyway. That And I got to say, too, like, yeah, companies will go to last at that, at that point. But here's the thing, like, is that most physical media collectors don't want the standard. And here, that I get that, but here's the thing. Uh, you have to decide at a point which ones are super important to you. And for those, you want your umbrella edition. You want that special edition. You want that. If you're, super Mario, if you're a massive Super Mario fan, uh, like me and Malcolm, you're probably going to get that special edition. You're going to save up Yippee! for it. Grab it. And you know what? When you get it, it's going to be a big piece of your collection. You're going to see it. You're going to, and you're going to be glad you got it. If you're not, then you can buy a Blu ray or DVD of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. For cheap. Um, so but if basically you're. What I, basically, what I was saying is if you don't want that edition, go get your smelly DVD and put that in your smelly <laughs> DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true you have to really like it is like Ragnar's right and that things are getting more expensive things are getting more pricey things are getting more premium but the idea behind this idea that when I thought about doing the stream was that that's why there's so much wonderful choice out there and uh and what we do and why when we're uh when we're creating collections have the 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 stuff that really speaks to us because well, your collection should not be like a random amount of stuff and okay oh you like part of it your if you yeah. your movie collection should represent and reflect your likes and your dislikes well not your dislikes sure. you're not gonna have a whole bunch of movies you dislike there uh, not unless you bought them accident but uh it's usually gonna be stuff oh I, I like this these are stuff that stuff i'm into this type of type of stuff there you'll see like oh my there's a lot of arrow there's a lot of screen factory a lot of anger syndrome i'm weird dude i got a, i've got a wide variety of taste um uh, I'm, I'm like no that's why me and malcolm get along we have a we have a crazy wide variety of taste um that's true. but but the thing is that like i could have bought like DVDs when I was in Canada of of, of Manuel. There was a bunch of like fairly cheap DVDs. Yeah, and you asked Emmanuel. me if you should at the time, and then you yeah, said, I was like went going back and mm -hmm. forth because yeah, as long as you got the movie, that's what counts. That's the thing. You, like you watch the movie, that's what counts. But if it's your, one of your favorite movies, it's something that you really like, it's something that you really love. You're probably not going to say, "Oh, this is too much," or "Oh, I can't," because you're probably going to say, "I really want this." If you look at the film and you're saying, oh, I'm not sure on this price, nine times out of ten, you probably it's probably something that you're thinking on for like, well, either it's just financial reasons or you really don't want that film as, as look, strong. I, I'm going to say this. Well, the reason I bought so many of the movies from uh, Umbrella earlier was because I had the 25% uh, discount code. Ooh. So that's that nice. meant, uh, so that meant I saved well twenty five percent off. So it was like the more I get, the more I save. So things like that, uh, lizard woman skin cost me like fifty four dollars and stuff like that. So then when that changes from fifty four Australian dollars, that works out to be like thirty quid, which is a bargain. That's that's definitely is. I couldn't that's imagine. Enough, I, I couldn't imagine paying, you know, like. Like I'd never pay like nine hundred pound for a rare still book, uh, but people post on bloody eBay and that—that's ridiculous. 
it that's the thing i mean like when you're looking at one of these umbrella releases when you're looking at stuff like this malcolm looked and he saw there's a bunch of things there when malcolm picked out the things that that spoke to him that he liked that was yes. special edition that he wanted and that he would appreciate uh, um, i'll just i'm just gonna say this the kofi one i got was for uh personal love interests because there's a poster of Pam Greer in it, and uh, when I get lonely at night, I always put Pam Greer on the computer screen. So I was like, if if there's a poster in there, maybe I could, you know, kind of uh, take it to the bed. Um, I'm sure Dan will love that's, it. <laughs> that's that's the only one. But I probably uh, think, didn't didn't another company release this? Didn't um, what do you call it? Release this? Uh, Radiance. Who had the better cover? I think Radiance. If it was Radiance, George will know. George, I swear Radiance. they did. I swear they did release this. So we got a Blu ray for Black uh, White Devil and I don't know if I've seen that film, to be honest with you. So I'm not going to like pretend, oh, that, that's I'm so excited about that film. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I this do know best one. 4K. There you go. 4K, finally. I almost bought this. I almost bought the BFI edition, I think it was, for 60 quid. I almost this is a gorgeous it, cover major. it is. I'm glad I wait, waited for the 4K. Because this is the type of film you want to see in 4K. It's a beautiful... That's the thing. There you go. That, like, There's certain films like... you. Like, oh, when you said, I don't know if I'm going to go win, win the Pool Blood Honey 2, and you're like, because it's not a 4K release. I'm like, do you need for you? <laughs> no, you don't. But for fur, well, my concubine, yeah, I can see people that got 4K saying, okay, this definitely um, mm. is a, you know, is 4K worth. This is a gorgeous film. It is a 4K wonderful worthy. I love this movie. You um, are worthy. It, it is, it, it gets the 4K cinema, call to cinema, stamp of approval. Yep. And, one I got excited about, I'm not gonna lie, because it's this is my childhood, this is my youth. Oh, yes, I was excited about this as well. I have to be honest, I was a bit what you call it, but it was a criterion, but I can see why. Well, you know the reason, right? Yeah, because of the pink shirt, and I and I quote, <laughs> Sometimes, Malcolm, sometimes you just gotta say, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, if you've seen Risky Business, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's actually a it good is, movie. It's a brilliant film, and it's so wonderfully shot. Is what I love about this film. It's like it's you th this could have been like a normal like teen film or whatever. Yeah, uh, but it's just so kind of like beyond that. You got the music from Tangerine Dream, who do just do amazing scores. Anytime you, you see Tangerine Dreams, name uh, Ragnar. Have a great great day, man, and thanks for coming in and offering. A, Kind of an interesting conversation. Uh, enjoy Take your work. Care, right now. Take care. But it's so wonderfully shot. There's a sequence where they kind of the where they make love on the uh, on the metro on the on the subway, and it is such a beautiful scene. Yeah, and it is so wonderfully done. Yeah, and De Mornier well, it's, is. It's a film. People. It's a film for again. You need a four K of really to get the full color and all that out of it. It is, and it's not one that I would normally that I would have thought of for yeah. 4K, but it makes complete sense that this one is a is a 4K release. Yeah. Um, and now I'll, what we I'll need, now what we need, now what we need in 4K is all the right moves. I I love that movie. I'm glad you mentioned it because nobody ever talked to them. <laughs> That's a favorite of mine, and people forget it exists. All your right is my time is best your fight. The reason it's your post is because if you pause it just right, you say it's paid by. <laughs> you do? We lost. Where did we lose you? Whoa, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You just dropped out for a second. Wow, um, dropped out just as I mentioned the pay pay. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, but no, I, I re I've always loved that. I think it's one of his more dramatic films. Yeah. One of his, his better, his better movies. But Risky Business, like. Classic. It's it pretty much it it changed it changed me. Um, yeah. it, when I was watching Risky Business as a kid, yeah, I there were certain aspects of Risky Business I'm like that changed the way I saw life. When I was well, 
after I saw it, I remember I used to get on the train a lot. And I used to hope <laughs> that I'd have sex one day. But um, <laughs> I will say this. What put on the is this film is referenced so much in media, especially with the sliding across the floor. Um, it's just yeah. constant. You see it all the time. Man, have you been on a, on a, on a train now? You realize like how like impossible or something that is because yeah. I'm out in Paris and same when I go to London and it, it is like so packed. Um, like there's nothing you can like nothing sexy about the train or subway. Um you're just way too close to people and most of the time people are too close to looks like you had to drop it there first. Well he's not dropped out, he's actually decided to go go do something. Oh, uh, but he'll be right back. Oh, maybe we did lose him for a second. Well, we've had some dropping in and out of uh, Malcolm there. Hopefully, it's not too much like internet wise. We'll get him back in. <clears throat> what I'll do in the meantime is I am going to uh, rank these these uh, releases. And uh, in my, in order for me, from least to best. Now, that saying least is that means it's the least film. It just means the with the interest that I have in it. Uh, so I'm going to put uh, Black God, White Devil. I haven't seen it. There we go. And the, uh, hey there. <laughs> so I, I just had a phone call. Oh. Yeah, it was from Virgin. Uh, asking me if I'm white to uh, take it away. No, it was uh, from Virgin. Asked me if I needed uh, internet and all this. And I'm like, well, I've got Sky. So. I love those calls, man. I love not having to have those calls anymore. <laughs> so, okay, well, so, well, I'm ranking the releases. so I'm going to rank the releases. I'm going to actually let's round robin it. Uh, we got like six titles in total. Okay. Uh, going with last place first. Okay. Uh, what do you put in your last place slot? Uh, Black Devil, White Devil, was it? Black God, White Devil, same as me, actually. Yeah. Uh, basically, because I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't. And it looks interesting, but I not I don't know enough about it to say. I swear so, it's an agent's put, title. Um, I'm gonna put on Perfect Days as number four or number five. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same here, actually. Uh, Perfect Days is uh, number five for me. I can't believe we're in like uh, in sync with these. And, and number yeah, number four. Number four is probably gonna be the uh, a Western one. Me too. We're supposed. To <laughs> we're not agree okay this is different uh okay we're about to our top three and what's your number three this, okay this number three number three is probably gonna be uh the samurai because i've only seen it once and i know it's a really good film but i'd like to watch it again in 4k and that's the reason it's number number three i okay, guess number three for me <laughs> <laughs> well we i, mean, I know we... well i know we're gonna pick different first so okay perfect I know that because uh, number second for me is risky business, and number two for me th for for a change is was going to be my farewell my concubine, which is a wonderful film, uh, but you know it's just a personal where it hits mm. me. And number one, obviously uh, for me is risky business, and I, well, number yeah. one for you is obviously farewell my concubine. Yeah, but I do oh, think for your concubine, risky business, business could be. Uh, at the same level, depending on what you see in each film, they're both very different. Very, very different. That's the thing. But it's a wonderful month for Criterion uh, for uh, for announcements. I got to say, they've been killing it lately with month, with their announcements. Yeah, they've been really good releases. I just wish they'd do a proper coming soon for the UK. What do you so mean? I know, so I knew what ones were actually coming out. It's because Criterion's like distributed differently over the, over there. Yeah, and they just recently changed distributors, actually. But yeah, um, they went from Sony, didn't they, to someone else? Was it Sony or did they go to Sony? It was Sony originally, and now there was someone else. I just, I maybe fingers crossed, uh, getting a, a copy. A review copy for uh, for Madam Web. Oh, nice! Which I want because I have so many things to say about Ma not just Madam Web, but uh, the whole aspect of that in general, and the way some people treat certain films. 
So uh, yeah. make, I'm going to get you on for, for that because uh, – and th- we may get Leather Jacked and Aaron for that video. Ooh, we're going to get the badass one, huh? Because uh, certain times it's got to get – Ratings did not have it. Okay, there we go. So who was it who released it then? Because I've heard the title. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was a different company in the country. Um, but I remember seeing it, and I remember it not being a release uh, from Criteria for someone else in the UK. I swear I saw that. I need this. Uh, I, I hope this comes to my Luna. Uh, them is one of my favorites. For those that don't know, that didn't see my inside unboxing, or uh, this over my Patreon right now, it's gonna be a, it's a limited exclusive, so it will be my regular channel. Um, it's one of my time exclusives. The French New Wave really hit me hard, in in yeah. the best possible way when it came. I needed it. Like if, if there ever was a time when I felt like okay, this is a this is a cinema like landscape that I need to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, that was it. This was the uh, this was the one. Yeah, because you know, how can you not? Uh, like things have been so. <laughs> oh, you're so adorable. Think things have been so like um, tame, and so yeah. which was Bold. okay. It's not so bored. Much I was, I was just I was getting tired of like uh, like the same. Same old, same old sort of thing. Yeah, it needed it needed a shake up, and this the French new wave of, of extreme cinema came along just at the right time, uh, for especially for horror fans like me, and to see movies like like Martyrs and Inside and them, uh, which are true I horror think, really when you think about it, it makes all the others look very time. It does, but and you know you need it, and then you then you get to th- things like uh, and I'll say this to be honest. Things like uh, hustle, and you realize oh, maybe we've had a bit. <laughs> maybe we're okay for a bit now. Yeah. Um, but I kind of think that we're kind of getting back a bit more to um, to that, maybe that style. Not not so much. Yeah. Not just because here's the thing: French new wave set of extreme cinema wasn't just. It wasn't like here. None of them are lazy. Like for whether it's inside or them, or uh, or if it or if it's like high tension they're not lazy films they're challenging films it's not just mm. you you the gores there but it's yeah. not just gore. they're 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 good films they're well-known films uh so i think we're uh, we're getting to the point where we're getting to uh, where we need to see the, a bit a bit more uh of a deconstruction a bit of a yeah, yeah. reconstruction when it comes to horror cinema and that's why we're go. seeing a lot of these indie things that are that are starting to pick up blood and honey was okay that was a bit lazy but it was okay uh, but fair credit to the director. Apparently, he took every critis- criticism to heart and doubled down and made a much better film. And uh, that's what you want to do. That's why that's why sequels exist, guys. Uh, is to uh, is to see something Improved. like become better than uh, than it was. Godfather, Godfather two, Godfather two. I'm sorry, you know, it's, it's it, Godfather two is better. It's like Infernal Affairs. Infernal Affairs two is better as well. Um. What I was gonna say was it's like Saw Ten, right, or Saw X, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the movie was just laughable. I mean, a lot of people loved it, and it was good, but it I felt more it. like a, it felt more like a comedy at times than an actual horror. Like the cheesiness in it is unreal, um, and I just feel like you know, don't well, I love seeing Tobin Bell, I love seeing all that, and it's great. And I hope they make many more before he passes away because he's like eight odd years old now. But I just don't, I don't think it's a good sequel at all or prequel, I should say, technically. I, I do. I think we needed it. I think because of Spiral, uh, which is okay, uh, and because how far off the mark that they've gone with, with the Saw films, we needed something to anchor it, something a bit different, a bit more character study. So that we could go and do like more. Sure, but you can't tell me it's not cheesy as hell. I see. I don't see it that way. I see it as like this is exactly when you think of like, okay, how did John Kramer become John Kramer? There, it, this makes sense. Uh, what what well, makes sense even think, more though is like this beautiful sequence where like of all the people in the world, 
you could screw over. You decide <laughs> this guy. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Don't get me wrong. That seems great. But the whole fact that he thinks he had surgery and he couldn't tell, but there was no scar on his head from the moment he left. And all that. It's just silly. It's just really silly. Well, considering what what size made us think in the in the past, I think we're, I think I can give it a pass. <laughs> but I think what we also saw with Satan is the possibility of a potential antagonist coming back, and that is mm -hmm. a very vicious, um, very cutthroat girl that that we don't actually see die. Yeah, that's true. And, and I think that's I think that's setting up for something. And I love how every I love how nearly all these pilbots survived the game, right? Uh, end up being apprentices. It's like, really? I think this one here is basically is going to be the opposite. So we're going to see someone up against Kramer as opposed to uh, maybe I even taking on a different aspect just in order to despite Kramer's, like, uh, you know, have someone to go, and I think that'd be a nice idea to go up. Someone, someone to go up against, like, uh, like you said before, all these have gone on. Oh, where yes, I've seen the light. You know, all, all this type of thing. What about somebody that's too evil and too mean to see the that light, yeah. and to really want to go up against, kind of like be the anti John Kramer? The oh, anti so imagine, yeah, imagine Jigsaw versus Jigsaw. Technically, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, technically, technically, Amanda was doing that at one point when she wasn't. Then people. Uh, Escape from the things. Oh, uh, justice for Amanda, man. I like Amanda. I think Hoffman's the best one, to be honest. I just love how evil he is. I mean, Hoffman is good, but here's a lot of people hate Hoffman. Like he, he gets hate on a lot. Uh, we're we're in the minority when it comes to Hoffman. But there's that sequence. I think it's in like South Five, uh, where Hoffman realizes at the same time that the FBI agents yeah. realize, oh no, you know, it's him. And then he just goes into this mode, him, like, yeah. mode, and it's an amazing scene. It is. This is like it pre John Wick, John Wick type thing. <laughs> yeah, all the, the eye movement scenes are phenomenal in that when he just goes oh, and does it. You know, I, I tell you the thing. You know what kills me is that the cast Manor is so good, yeah. in, uh in these movies, is that, uh, and I always forget he's Australian. Yeah, the same as his brother. Yeah, I, I always forget he's Australian. I think like okay, he's I think he's American, or I think he's like uh, he's uh, because of his name, I think he's Latin. Yeah, uh, but uh, but it's a uh, it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I it think is sometimes awesome. I think sometimes we forget people's uh, nationalities when they come from different places because they're so good of an actor, but you you don't realize. Casas Mandler is definitely an underrated actor. Oh, yeah. And also, well, look at this sexy dead end driving. Same as Lewis Mandler as well. This is the sexy dead end driving. That uh, is. I've got that. I ordered that. <clears throat> That's one of the ones you ordered? Yep. That's a good title. I mean, like, you're looking at a 120 page hardbound book here, uh, reprint of the original screenplay. Be interesting to read that and see what the differences are. I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw his latest video, Serial at Midnight, uh, but he was unboxing this and Bully, Chaser, and I think it was them. And uh, yeah, they all look phenomenal. The Bully one comes with a massive hard book. I, well, yeah, it's the book that it's based on, the Bully's based on. Uh, no, I haven't yet because I got it lined up. That's my watch, but I wanted mm. to kind of, this is the thing. I'll have videos that I know I'm going to watch. I'm like, okay, yeah. I can watch this video, but or I can play this video game, but I have to do this much work first. I have to do this much editing first. I have to do this much filming first. I have to do this much live streaming first. <clears throat> so that's where uh, that's where this one uh, this one came from. Cool. Oh. But uh, well, this is an earlier live video. I don't expect to get as many people as we normally get. Uh, but because uh, lately we've been getting, I got to say, we've been getting a lot of people. Um, yeah. come oh, here's the thing. Here's the gonna be here's the killer part. It's just out, but it's just getting a 4K. Yep. It's how so we got a 4K in it in France. Yeah. Oh, uh, actually, I, I just missed it. Would you have bought that if it'd been there? 
This one here? No, the uh, phones one. I probably would have actually. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Hitcher. I reckon, but, uh, I reckon it's going to set up within an hour. It goes in second sight. This one's out of stock already, look. It is a it is a cult movie. It is the definition of a classic. Did Malcolm shave? It does look like yes, he I shaved. did. Look, I did shave. I did. See, and make it look different. Audition's gone. I'm sure that's one you probably would have wanted to grab. It would have been there. Uh, I would have if I, if it had been the collector's edition. I would have definitely picked up. So. They were the two sisters because they both come from 4K Masters, and mm. the um, the other ones don't. So the film cell—that's what you're missing. Yeah, and stickers. The Trust the Fungus edition had a film cell from the movie and stickers. That's it. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, that's that's that doesn't matter then, does it really? Yeah. So you're you're pretty good there. Yep. When it comes to uh when it comes to that stuff. And of course there's some regular editions here, some some less, you know, big editions. Uh and there's some editions here that I think are, are overpriced, that I think are uh just regular editions. Like I like Noble House, the miniseries. It was I thought it was really, really good. I'm a big James Cabell fan. Oh, I got that coming. And I just spent sixty bucks for it. Do you know I've wanted <laughs> to see that? I've wanted to see that for uh, years and never seen that. It's really good. Like Pierce Bronson's greatness. It's Clavel. Do you like Clavel? Do you like James Clavel's books? Yeah, I do because I like Shogun, don't I? Okay, then you're gonna love. Then you're gonna love this. Now, the or, or this is not like Shogun. This is kind of like, if I remember correctly, it has to do with the where this is this more has where the kind of the stock market starts a little bit earlier. Yeah, it is. It's about that. But what I mean is, it's the same kind of miniseries in the sense of, you know, brilliant writing. This is gonna be amount of double dip. Unfortunately, that must sort out. But hopefully, it'll come back in. In a limited edition, because if the limited edition comes back in, that's one that I might uh, like have to double dip on to kind of make it myself an ultimate edition. Like I, I try Ooh. not to double dip whenever I can right now. Now that being said, yeah. I'm a massive hypocrite in that I will double dip. Or new terrorist. We're actually going to talk terrorist announcements. Uh, so that's coming up Wednesday. You're welcome to join if you want to. We can do a three way terrorist talk. Oh, let's have a freeway. But they can <clears throat> be the fillings. And we'll be the sandwich crust. <laughs> it's set my mouth on, huh? I will. I don't have it set up yet, but I will send I'll send I'll, I'll set up tonight and I'll uh and I'll send you the link. Because we're gonna be doing like uh we'll do like the We'll be there. We'll start maybe like a half hour before the announcements, kind of like work our way into it. And we can all like react to the announcements, talk about them and our and our thoughts on these. And hopefully why one of them is Gator Bait and Gator Bait 2. Because <laughs> we know that it's coming this year now. And I'm a massive Cloudy Jennings fan. Rest in peace. But yeah, I had uh, a collection of James Clavell when I was young. Like had Shogun and Noblos. Uh, I think one's a foreign release. That would be interesting to see. Don't say too much. So we got to we got to save some stuff for the uh, from the pre show. <laughs> this is a bit of a huge release for uh, for a cheap release. So this is what I want what I want to talk to you about. So because people bypass this, this is Cannonball Run One and Two. So Cannonball Run One and Two were cheesy car race movies from back when I was a kid. Here's the thing. Uh, finding Cannibal Run 1 and 2 on Blu-ray, both of them, like finding one of them was was pretty easy. Finding Cannibal Run, I'm not sure if it was one or two, but one of them was not impossible to find. Like you could sometimes find a DVD, but you weren't finding a Blu-ray. Not a both films. Are you unboxing something good? Yeah, I'm unboxing loads of things. <laughs> I got my Tokyo right, well, medal. Go. I got a Tokyo mm -hmm. medal. So basically, you know my Let's walking. There you go. I'll show you a lot. Look at that. Oh, that's cool, man. Uh, and on the back, look. 
Du, du, du. <laughs> What's cool? What's cool is it glows in the dark. So that's the medal, but we're going to get down to the media because I've got three three packages of media. Three packages of media. Yeah. Okay, there you go. And impromptu unboxing. There we go. Let's have a look. What's in there? So I've got to make sure that it's all safe. Okay, we've got a snake fist of a Buddhist dragon. This is a kung fu movie. So I was one, missing it. A uh, uh, no, video vengeance. I, I've been missing out on these two for years, so it was nice to have that. And then Kung Fu versus Yoga, which is another video vengeance title. So <laughs> I've almost, That's yeah, a I've almost, <laughs> I've almost <laughs> got them complete. Actually, I think I'm missing four. Let me just uh, do this. Okay, now I've got one from America. Oh. Yeah, I've got one from America. So let's have a look. If we go to the bottom. Yeah. I had one come yesterday, so hopefully it has the rest in. Okay, here we go. We've got, uh, yep, man, four. Four K. Okay. We've got some of Aaron's favorites here. We've got a Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Fantastic Hells yeah. Win, P.I. New York. I would totally buy those. Uh, no, I hate these. When they have them on DVD, video, disc on demand, it annoys me. Uh, oh, Baby Assassins in a, this slip. Look. That's not. Oh, hey, look how cute that cat is. Look at that. Escape What's really annoying about this? Is for the yeah. cover because it's so shiny, it's so like damaged. See, can you see it? Like, it's, it's so hard. It looks like Rad. Remember when Rad came out? Yeah, uh, that's the actual thing inside. So it's a bit annoying that this comes so messed up, but at least it come with a slip. So then, uh, Curious Kate around the free movie, uh, mystery collection from Hallmark. Who's the girl in that one? Um. She played, I don't know, but she played the mum in, uh, what's her name? Uh, hey. Nikki DeLoach. She played the mum in uh, Awkward, the um, uh, MVT, MTV series. Oh, I used to watch that, actually. I used to like that uh, Baby Assassins 2. <laughs> Which, I'll be honest, I would have preferred if this had been the slip style on the other one, because that one looks so damaged. Then we've got a few more. We've got uh, Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, Nikki and Nora, Sister Sloops. Ooh. Is yeah. it kind of like a, a spin on the uh, the Thin Man thing? Because, you know, Nick and Nora Charles? <laughs> I know. I think it's uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of like a sister version of Nancy Drew. So. And then we've got a Donnie Yen movie called Polar Rescue. So they got I like that. that cover. And then uh, let me just put these over. Here. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, dear. Well, you can't show. No, uh, it, it slid. And then, come on. And then, uh, where was it? Let's make sure. And then we've got this box. <laughs> so if I can open it, uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. I gotta do something real quick. Alright. Nearly there, guys. Nearly there. And then, uh, oh, come on. There we go. There we go. I've got one part open. Bang on. So, in case people wonder, this next box has a whole load of Korean movies in it. Can you see this? I think one is a foreign release. Yoga versus Malcolm's old beard. 
This is good. I was I, feeding the cats. Okay, so let's uh, get into this. So I have no idea what these movies are called. I bought them because I looked them up, and at the time, uh, I found out what the titles were. But I mean, I don't know what the titles are because, well, obviously, I, you know, they're not on. See there. if I can figure it out. I looked at the cover, and I'll see if I can figure so, it. So we've got this one, which looks really weird. I say that's leather action super force. You know what? It might be. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> the, what's interesting so you see this cover right yeah when you open it inside it looks like a completely different movie no that looks very different you like it does doesn't it that is weird they've got that one. Oh, this one's in english we've got general stone which is go. a, a marvel scope title which was right. the spin-off title but continued on the video vengeance one later on you know there you go I got then such I've a got, nostalgia for Railscope stuff. Yeah, Railscope's brilliant. Then we've got the Legendary Collection's Cheeky Chat, which is an old Kung Fu movie I've never seen. Oh, nice. So I'm quite excited by that. Then we've got Buddhist Fist, which surprisingly I didn't have, which surprised me. So I've got that. I got the Challenger, even though I didn't order it, because I said I just wanted a few, but he sent this to me anyway, I guess. So that's handy. That was nice of the guy to do that. Uh, then I've got Disciples of Shaolin Temple, which uh, let's have a look, which came out in 1993. And then, last but not least, in this box, we've got things. I thought you were going to pick up one. I was like, <laughs> I got, uh, this is a romantic comedy. Uh, these Korean titles are directly from Korea, which means they're not available over there. So like I'm really happy. Yeah. Uh, then there's that one. I didn't show this one, did I? It's that one. That one. This one. And this one called Sub Jonji. I think that's how you say it. So yeah, that's all. That's my mail for today. Bit disappointing, should have been more, but yeah, should have been more. Yeah, it should have been a lot more, really. But you know, aren't you um, slowed down in your buyings like recently? Well, I, I'm not buying anything now, so I have to unbox this. Can we just start this video with you saying a bit of the massive minimum umbrella stuff that you picked up? Uh, does. Sure, it's just <laughs> uh, I, I can't blame you. Some umbrella stuff, though, some of it's really nice. You can pick up good stuff, and you get 25 oh, percent off, so that is a big thing. Oh, look at that! It came, uh, this came loose in the box, and it's got marks all over it. Oh. It's, as long as your surface scratches, it should be okay. What doesn't help is it's a demand disc, which means when you get these to America, guys, a lot of them, if you're not careful. Uh, burn on demand. If it's got that down the bottom there, you know yeah. that uh, thing, it's burn on demand. And I don't recommend buying them unless you can get them in person, uh, because in the post they get damaged, especially those Hallmark ones. Yeah, Hallmark. the Hallmark ones. I love Hallmark, but I wish they'd be more uh, thingy. Anyway, that was a nice little uh, unboxing. Makes me look like I have no knowledge of half of what I bought, but oh well. <laughs> I want the VC Andrew on Hallmarks. Those are insane. I, I, yes, I, I, um, I've got the because I buy most of my Hallmark stuff from uh, VI Vision because they do the free packs, but things like this they don't release them for some reason. I think it's because they're like one offs, or is it like Lifetime? Um, I gotta think because somebody in the comments, I was gonna look at me and go, well, Actually, <laughs> actually. <laughs> You are wrong because yeah. the best version comes out here. And uh, well, guess what? We don't care. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> we say what we want to say. <clears throat> hey Donna, look at this. How sad is it? This this got shipped here, right? Yeah. It's so beautiful, but look how marked up it is on the back of that. Oh, that's a it's the scratches. Yeah. Scratch yeah. And File the is really there. hard not to come marked. Yeah, it's really sad. My rad was like that. Exactly. You know, if I could have got this in person, 
It wouldn't have been damaged. So in that, um, what was that film called? Uh, Dark Force recently released a film. Assignment something. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Assignment something. Anyway, I got it. I opened the slip. And the inside artwork, right? There you go. He's, he's nailed it. That's perfect. Um, I, um, what was I going to say? Uh, anyway, that's how I got it. And Donna, can you get me my that assignment disc for me? That assignment disc. Remember the one I got about the weird cover thing? It's in the slip cover. It's on the side in the dining room. It's got a black cover. No, in the dining room. It's got, it's called, it's a assignment saying, it looks like it's part of the print. Well, I got it from uh, Film Treasures because I got it with my uh, Tinto Brass stuff. But I got it because I got the two latest four Ks. And uh, it came with a really messed up printing. I have a cat climbing my leg. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's the way where jeans goes. Yeah, because the pain, otherwise. Long sleeve shirts. Him was upstairs, but little one. It's weak. Oh yeah. And she was like, "It's it's it's got a dark slip cover. It looks foreign print." God, how old is it? Have like little scratches on her legs when she woke up from the little. Yeah. Kid. Oh god. That's it. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, but I showed you it yesterday. Yeah. yeah so this you, is, this fair, is you have it, a lot right? of movies. You probably showed it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so this is it, right? Yeah. I got it from Film Treasures, and when it came, it looked like this. Can you see the weird printing on it? And if you look on the back, it's got multiple barcode prints from where the cover was messed up. But it's Dark Force Entertainment, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Isn't that that dude that used to hang out with Bill and was kind of douchey and like live streams and stuff? I believe so. Well, then. <laughs> but it still shouldn't look like it's been pissed on. The fact that he hasn't actually pissed on it is actually surprising. Uh, The guy that well, started it, but wanted to be the Chris Jericho of like uh, movie companies. Hey, that's perfect. You get some music going in there. And you're laughing. You want to try to jump? Are you sure? That's a big one. I can do this. You want to go across, walk across? Okay, you can walk across. I'm putting my leg up because the cat wanted to jump, and I don't think he was brave enough to do the jump to the other chair. So I put my leg. For those that are new to the channel, I rescue cats. And uh, that's uh, that's that not true. You don't rescue, rescue them. Me. You steal them. Oh, a... You kidnap yeah. them. You hold them prisoner. They just want to escape, guys. We need to start a GoFundMe called Let's Save the Kitties. Actually, I need to, if I had a bigger place, and I had like the 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 resources and the and the manpower and stuff like that. I yeah. would be looking at like a let's save the kitties type of thing, and I would do oh, a GoFundMe nice, and I'd and I'd take get a bunch of cats and I'd rescue them and um, just do the uh, you know get their just fixed and everything done for them. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? It's one of my dreams, actually. I love you know you know me. I, I love cats. You know I love animals. I love cats, but you know what I'd love to save? Armadillos. Well, I don't watch, them. do not watch you opening a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It will break your heart. Just saying. <clears throat> I love armadillos. Armadillos are beautiful creatures. They make great oh. pets, apparently. Speaking of, of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and somebody recently uh, say, uh, like, hey, I like the new Texas Hands of the Massacre, the remake, better than the original. I think it's a better film. 
And I'm like, well, you're allowed to have a wrong opinion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. They think, the remakes, they think the remake's a better film. Yeah. Well, so basically, a film that exists only if the people do the stupidest possible things. Absolutely every single turn. I in the do, look, um, the one thing I will say about the remake is it does have sexier women in it. I don't know. I think she's pretty sexy. Uh, the especially the girl that that sequence, like the walking up to the house scene. Um, mm. That's that, that that's definitely a big one. What was that? What was that? But I said, can you find one movie amongst thousands? <laughs> oh well, you know. I got that one movie yesterday, and I thought she'd know it because we because I showed her it. But obviously, she's not going okay. to because she's because she's not as interested in as me, is she? So this is how it goes. Um, so just so you know, so, so you know, from from your better half and my better half, the conversation starts like this. Okay. Uh, hey, Ian, I just picked up, and at that point, blah blah blah, <laughs> blah blah blah, nice nice nice. <laughs> that's probably that's probably that's probably actually very true um because uh, sometimes someone will go to me you didn't show me that one and i'll go huh you know real or not real. i don't think so i mean like i can see them do it but they're not it, doing a be... remake they're doing a sequel they're doing a yeah. sequel apparently in animation form i like clerks did with the tv series originally i love clerks the tv series my favorite episode is the clip episode where they show the same clip over and over. <laughs> yeah, that's Remember? right. Uh, I, yeah, I'm surprised they only had, they only had six episodes, didn't it? As a re yeah, you, you, there's more if you get the, the set, because I think there's more on set that weren't really yeah. shown. Because um, I had but, the DVD set, but I can't remember the amount of episodes. Just not a, I think, oh, because on the back, I think it said only six aired. Oh, it's so long ago. It was, it was such a fun series. I think Jonathan Frakes was like the bad guy, too. Because the guy from... Yeah. Like, Gargoyles. I just remember, yeah. I just remember how silly and ridiculous it was. And so over the top, like, and it's like definitely wasn't politically correct. Like, so it's a, like, it was, it's a raunchy show. It's like saying that it can't be shown now. It would be like, still, like, look at what stuff that gets shown now. I mean, like, people think that, I think it's false narrative, is that those things can still be shown now. Like there's gonna be people that are gonna like, oh, I hate this show. It's gonna be cat. It's just gonna cancel. But at the end of the day, you know what's gonna happen? It'll just go on a different channel or something like that. I like think... Cartoon Network's still insane. Like if you watch like <laughs> the stuff that's on there, where it's like Steven Universe or or like uh, or every single episode of Rick and Morty is yeah. like Mental. watch. Trust me, ten years from now, people are gonna say, oh man, you be and Rick and Morty might still be on the air. <laughs> no, you might show Rick and Morty nowadays at a point where like we're. At our most, uh, at a time when people, where stuff like that does actually, you know, happen. you know, I can't watch Rick and Morty for one reason: that constant burping. It's, it it's less, me. Uh, it's less than later episodes. It's annoying at first, but it's such a good annoying. show. What's annoying is the fans. My, my favorite <laughs> episode is the dog one where the dog falls in love with Jerry, and because of it, it goes. I uh, goes. I'm not. I'm going to not take over the world. And uh, you're like, what? It's not the first episode. Yeah. When they no, give I said that's no. I said that's one of my favorite episodes. No, but it's not the first one because when they give Dog intelligence. And, Is it the uh, first and episode? Because that point was late on in the series. I thought it was Cause like because you get the point where it's in the we're in the bedroom and he calls him by the name. It's like I'm sorry. That was my slave name. <laughs> <laughs> My actual name is. <laughs> yeah, I rewatched the Rick Martin recently, so that's how I know. Oh, so that's why you know then. I have a, um, I want to I want to pick up the discs and watch them again. Well, the so ones I've seen, and then kind right. of move forward. Because I know season seven just got released on Blu-ray, but better I'm than for more better than season six actually. Yeah, because they changed the voice actors, didn't they? You don't really notice. Uh, you notice a little bit. But um, the, it's pretty pretty close. Some people are got a nod about. I really liked it. Uh, with Solar Opposites, you know, where they changed the voice actor because the same mm. actor, right? Uh, yeah. They did it in a differently kind of unique way, is that he gets zapped in the oh. throat. Look another. <laughs> he I gets don't know what happened the there. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> he gets zapped in the throat with a uh, with a voice changer, 
and it gives them the oh, smaller. Oh, so leaf. that's why. So that's how they got around it. In in solar opposites, uh, and like they just in Rick and Morty just get sound alikes, but in like uh, in in real solar opposites, like <clears throat> all of a sudden he gets hit and he's like, something's happened to my voice. <laughs> it's like I'll get the I'll get the thing to change your voice back. No, I I think I like it, <laughs> which is really good actually. I do need to thing it. I think it's. I think it, I've I've seen some of them in CEX for like three quid each. You know the blue rays. Yeah. So I might pick. I might. Oh, yay! I just got my shipment notification from um, Indicator. Oh, nice. Which means they've shipped my uh, my uh, Shin Roland a uh, blue uh, four case early. It's supposed to come out the twenty second. Yeah, it is going to be a while before I get to follow. Uh, to be honest with you, because I I, I have played the games and I do like them a lot. Uh, one of them was a bit iffy, especially when I started it, but it got got better. But uh, I have so I'm so behind. I'm just going through the Jello Black, which, yeah. in other words, AKA the the other you know forgotten Jello Box set because that it really is. Like I started watching one, I'm like, hey, there's a couple of these. I'm going down. I'm blind because. I've not seen these movies before. Yeah. So I watched, I gloriously watched the Rosabella Neri uh, smile. Was it smile before death? Oh, I love that movie. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I watched it and I watched it for the first time. I think it was, um, was it last year? Was it this, early this year? Uh, last year I watched it because it was in the set and I absolutely loved it. Twist after twist, everything. It's an incredible movie. Yeah. I was shocked because Rosabella Neri, like, you know, was known for getting nude. And yeah. it's quite a, a long time in the movie before that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're watching, yeah, you're like, it's, yeah, she's, shouldn't she be naked by now? <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend that. It is a good one. Uh, I highly recommend that set. I'm on the second one right now, uh, but I have, which I'm going to watch actually after this. Uh, the uh, And I'm halfway, about halfway through it, like this priest gets killed. Oh, um, Oh, what was that one? Uh, the weapon, the mode of the hour, something like that. The hour, the weapon, well, like something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I it's saw that. It's not as good so far, but like maybe it picks up. That's probably but, why uh, I forgot most of it, to be honest. And uh, I kind of remember the Killer Reserve Nine Seats. I think I've seen that one, but uh, the second, the, these other two, I haven't. So, the Killer Reserve the- Nine Seats is really good. I love that movie. I had the German Blu ray of it. For years, I really like it. It's not your usual in some ways. It feels very slasherish. Uh, depending on how you go in, looking at it, but it's very good. I like that. I like when they hit that like that spot, that kind of sweet spot in between. As for as for Fallout, I'm a little bit angry with the show because there's a there's a goal in there, or I'm guessing it's a guy, and it shouldn't be a guy. It should be a woman. It should be a woman called Beatrice. It was in New Vegas. She was a uh, protector, and she was a cowgirl, and she turned into a prostitute because of me in the series, in the game. And I used to go and visit her weekly for some... Right? And I just wish they'd have put her in it instead because she was a hell of a woman and one of the greatest interpretations of a girl of all time. So I will not be watching that show. I would not be thinking. Instead, I will be complaining. I will be walking outside of a Picard. I will be putting, making a Facebook group saying, we want Beatrice. And if anybody doesn't like that, you don't know Fallout. Okay? And by the way, the Fallout games used to be really good until they had Liam Neeson in Fallout 3 playing the dad. who just kept running off. Screw him. He can get lost. But anyway, the- yeah. Uh, yeah. If you, I think you'll get more for it if you played the games. In some aspects, but the probably not Neeson. as much as you think. The best Liam Neeson is is from Ted. I think it's Ted or Ted too. It's like uh, he said, "I'm, I'm, uh, am I to believe that uh, these tricks here are supposed to be exclusively for kids?" Well, uh, well, yeah, that's uh, that, that's that's what the commercial says. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy these tricks and I'm gonna walk out. The door and i'm gonna assume no one's gonna be following me and it's like uh okay sure not a, not a problem i'm not gonna forget what you did to me please do <laughs> i 
Well, one of the one of the best Liam Neeson things is in Life Life is Short. When he goes um on about when he when he does the improv with Ricky Gervais and he goes, Okay, you come in and I you're gross and I come in and goes, knock knock, he goes, Hello. And he goes, Hi, do you have any throat? And he goes, No. And he goes, Why? And he goes, Because I've got full blown, you know. And he just keeps doing it over and over again to the point where it just makes you laugh. And the way he just stares at the camera like, what's your problem? You know? And then he goes, what? okay, you haven't got full-blown, uh, you know, STD, right? And he goes, okay. So he goes, knock, knock. And he goes, hello. And he goes, I'm shut. And he goes, why are you shut? And he goes, because I just found out I've got full-blown. <laughs> it's just, like, well, it just it's so funny. Yes, you know? he is such a good... It's such good comedic timing. That's not what he's known for because people th think Liam Neeson is like as this serious dude. Yeah. Maybe you think of Ryan Gosling the same way, but Ryan Gosling and Liam Neeson are both like fairly wacky oh, guys. I'm looking forward to watching that. Uh, is it The Stump Man or something? Oh, Fall Guy. Yeah. Fall Guy based on the TV that. series from Lee Majors. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie because the series is good. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. Like him, him and Emily Blunt, which is kind of cool because he was in Barbie, she was in Oppenheimer. They're coming together to a fall guy. So you got to love that. Well, that being said, guys, my computer is down to 15%. So I thank everybody oh, for joining no. us here today um, for an, an early video that I, I did not expect to do. Uh, next Wednesday, be sure to check out me and Malcolm and uh, Jason uh, there to be to look into the Terror Vision titles that are coming out, announcements. And a lot more coming up this week. Is that sure this, is that this week? What? Is that this Wednesday? Just this week, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did I say next week? Uh, no, uh, no. I, you said next Wednesday. And I just want to make sure it was this week so I didn't get confused. But be sure to like check out the uh, the Targets, Car Carletta Prestige unboxing that I did today. And if you're on my Patreon, be sure to uh, check out what was it? What was it? What was it? The no, it's not the pin one. Though I got to say, my pin uh, from just to this, Brian from just to this, like asked me about the uh, the uh, the inside second side edition that I unboxed. Uh, Brian asked from just to this said, you know, I heard that pin German media book is not great. Like the the the, so I sent some pictures of the of of the of the film to him. I said, you know, it looks a little bit soft at the beginning, but then it gets really really sharp and some really beautiful sequences. And I shown him, and I sent him pictures of it. And after I did, so he tweeted it that he, he was picking up the uh, the media book, Whoa. Pin, the media book, and I uh, tagged me into the tweet. And then there's a whole bunch of other people that picked it up, like it sold out in the DBLE, you know, selling the st standard edition. So uh, yeah, we uh, we do get things sold here apparently. And and who was that? Uh, Brian from Just a Disc. The but broadcast. Brian doesn't exist. It's Frank Hagenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Lotter. What's his name? What's the guy's name? Frank Hanalotter? Oh, Hanalotter. Yeah, that's him. That's who that is. It's not Brian. That's an alias. I'm telling you. Hey, by the way, guys, you aren't checking out Brian's stuff. You really should. Uh, whether it's the podcast or it's YouTube channel that he's been doing for the last couple of years now, uh, just some really good stuff. But with that being said, I, uh, I do want to die on camera so well no i, can die on camera. <laughs> I don't want to do oh, that anyway god. <laughs> that that. Did. oh god uh, <laughs> we'd have to do a memorial with you laying there like, he was a good man he was well, we did get to be an earthquake on camera so well, yeah uh yeah, with, i don't want like my computer to die so <laughs> guys have a wonderful day and we will see you here next time thank you so much for coming to Malcolm. oh good i'm always glad to be here